Hello Audioholics, this is Logan, and this is just kind of a quick video I thought I might make because uh, Christmas is coming up, it's December 23rd when I'm filming this, I'll probably upload it on the same day, um, December 24th of course is Christmas Eve, December 25th, Christmas Day, and I thought I would show off all of my... Christmas related music that I have on various different formats. I will get to my regular music collections. I will get back to that at some point, but for right now, I just want to do this kind of quick video. So, a lot of these records, especially the records, are not very valuable, not very sought after, basically in the dollar bin at Goodwill type of things that even the hipsters wouldn't touch. Here's the thing, though. A lot of these records were some of the first that I bought, and they hold a lot of value to me as a result of that. See, when I started collecting records, it was just a little bit before the sort of vinyl record resurgence. So, as a result, and, and, and you still find these records, you know, in Goodwill, Salvation Army, thrift stores, uh, things like that, you know, uh, charity shops, these one dollar, nobody really even wants to spit next to them kind of records. But you know what? It brings me back to a simpler time when I didn't have to worry about spending $30 for the newest Paul McCartney album or whatever. In fact, the newest Paul McCartney album probably wouldn't have been issued out on vinyl to the general public, as far as I'm aware. So, with that out of the way, let's get these albums out of the way. Uh, Bing Crosby, White Christmas. This is just a classic Christmas album, um, initially issued on 78, a series of 78s, later on, of course, issued on an LP, and here, uh, cassette, audio cassette. Now, this is an 8-track, uh, Gene Autry Christmas Classics, of course, Gene Autry, I think most notable for his rendition of uh, Frosty the Snowman, uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, some of the most uh, well-known versions to be played. So, first, those of you who might not be as in the know about older music formats, because 8-track tapes do not have the same kind of hipster cred that vinyl records and even, to some degree, audio cassettes have. Um, it's a format that was, at least in the United States, very popular in the 1970s, especially in cars. You would find a lot of... You, you would find all of the major hits... And this was before... Well, cassettes were out, but they didn't necessarily sound all that great. And a lot of cars at the time had 8-track players in them. And when you got home, you could buy an 8-track stereo deck and play music that way. The quality was absolutely terrible. It, um, it basically ran on one infinite loop, so it would play four different programs in stereo, so eight tracks, and it would just automatically change the program. So what would often happen is you would get a song that would cut halfway through, switch out the program, and then fade back in. It, it's absolutely terrible, and I do not recommend anybody collect for this format. 
but I'm just a weirdo, and I think this is just kind of a cute little novelty, you know? I, I don't listen to music on a track on a regular basis, but I just think these are kind of neat. Uh, CDs, Trans-Siberian Orchestra, The Last Christmas Eve. Of course, Trans-Siberian Orchestra uh, grew from the ashes of Sabotage, which is an absolute shame that, because Sabotage is infinitely better than this group in every single conceivable way. Um, I should actually... We should probably do a Sabotage album on Audioholics un uh, Unite. But, uh... This is pretty cool because it has not only the CD, but it has this kind of neat booklet thing. I don't entirely know what it is. What is this? Are these lyrics or? Yeah, I think that's what this is. I think these are lyrics or liner notes or something. Oh, or I don't know. It could also just be like an art book. There's like some neat artwork in here. Anyway, I'll set that to one side. Uh, Manhattan Steamroller Christmas, Barry Manilow Christmas. I don't even know how I got this. <laughs> um, in this ugly envelope looking label, we have uh, Diana Ross and the Supremes. If I can kind of quick pull that out there. It's an absolutely terrible condition. <laughs> um, I think I got it from my grandfather whenever I first started collecting. Uh, also in terrible condition, Bing Crosby, Frank Sinatra, 12 Songs of Christmas. Again, getting into the classic Christmas songs that nobody would ever touch. <laughs> If they are a serious vinyl collector, I would never, I would have not picked this up again. But I'm kind of glad I did back when I did. Because, again, early days of vinyl collecting, you, you're, you know, picture, picture this. You're 12 years old, you don't have a lot of money, you don't have a job. You go to, like, a library or a Goodwill, somebody that's selling these you know, vinyl records, and you can't be too picky because they just, they don't have Beatles and Rolling Stones and The Doors and whatever. You have stuff like this and Herb Albert and Mitch Miller. But, yeah, that being said, um, I mean, it's still objectively really good music. They're good vocalists at least and Frank Sinatra in the wee small hours of the morning go check out my audio holics on that one that's I, I I still argue the most influential album of all time uh Elvis Christmas I have a couple uh I have that one too um actually I'll show this one off real quick as well this is one without a case Again, not my prized possessions, but uh, just to show off. Uh, Christmas with Shay Atkins. I'm not entirely sure who that is, but uh, apparently some person who does Christmas music. Uh, Brenda Lee, I do know who this is. Her song she's most famous for is her version of Rocking Around the Christmas Tree. If you've heard that song, it's most likely you've heard the Brenda Lee version. Even though a lot of people, of course, have covered it after her. Um, I'm not even entirely sure if she's the original, but she's the oldest version I've heard. Uh, Johnny Mathis... Uh, Holiday Magic, a bunch of different artists. We have, uh, Glenn Campbell. Uh, Wayne Newton. Just a bunch of different ones. We have the Christmas song, Nat King Cole. Um, actually, I'm pretty sure that was, uh, one of Nat King Cole's biggest Christmas carols. 
I don't know if he's the one who wrote it. Probably not, but... Or even the first one to perform it. Uh, another Nat King Cole. The Best of Christmas. This is just another straight-up compilation of older tunes from the 40s, 50s, 60s. Uh, Christmas with... Christmas Without Daddy. I have no idea what this is. Loretta Lynn. She's a country artist, I believe. But um, my girlfriend's mother actually got me this. Uh, because she saw it at a yard sale. And I'll have to give it a shot. Maybe I'll even listen to it uh, tomorrow, Christmas, whenever. Uh, we have... This, which I actually have no idea what the hell it is. Um, let's open this. Yeah, I know. Sue me for how I'm handling these. These are not priceless heirlooms. Um, the glorious sound of Christmas. I think this is more orchestral. Because that's usually the um, the label Columbia used for less contemporary music. And then finally, we have Bing Crosby and David Bowie, uh, Little Drummer Boy, and then something else on the flip side. Who cares? This is the best Christmas album I have, and probably my favorite single. Because it is on red vinyl. I have, I mean, I have a couple colored vinyls now, but this is the first one I got, and I still think it's really cool, and I still pop it on every now and again. And, you know, Bing Crosby and David Bowie are still just very electric artists. Electric personalities. So, that's everything... Again, just wanted to quick get this video out here. Very, uh, very unscripted, unrehearsed. So, that'll do it. And until next time, I bid you audio do. Goodbye.